All right, this is a monster video. It's uh, I've been doing this for like two hours now, so and I still have to edit it. Um, it's gone on longer than I thought it was going to go on. Uh, this is debugging or getting debug information out of Unity and putting it into a database, um, a text file, um, a web page, anything you want. It's just getting information out of Unity and then publishing it to something. So for that, we use a web server that, uh, that I, the code I got for uh, is the link down below. Uh, and we write some HTTP responses. Uh, and uh, we end up having a canvas with a little dot on it that moves around the screen when you move the character around the screen. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a long video. Uh, I apologize for that. Mika watching double speed or whatever. Um, although admittedly I talk in double speed, so it's probably not a good idea. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you like it. Um, and of course, we start, as always, after the fade. I've been looking at doing a, a debug web server inside Unity for a while, and I was I was looking up the .NET API on how to, to uh, achieve this, and I came across this uh, excellent post from uh, this, this chap here called Dave. I mean, I don't think he's got a last name, but uh, Dave, uh, the link to this post is, is down below. Excuse me, sorry, I'm still trying to get over a, a cold. I have my, my pint of Ribena here. It is Ribena. Um, I don't drink pints of wine. Uh, that would just be too much. That'd be a half pint. Um, and, and so his post goes through exactly what I want to do. So I'm just going to, uh, he has a license agreement in here. Um, in fact, I'll just zoom in here so you, can, you guys can see this. Um, this little bit of code has proved quite popular, and recently I've been asked if there's has been released under any particular license since I found such a small bit of code, uh, just the evolution of the MSDN documentation found here, which is what I was looking at. Um, I didn't really think about a license for it, but I'm happy to share the code, so to make the situation clear, I'm releasing it under the MIT license. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to release this commercially anyway. This is just a tutorial video, but I wanted to take his idea and then build um, build on it a little bit. So um, so that's what we're going to do just now. So the first thing is uh, I want to grab this class wholesale, this web server class. Um, so I have created a, a, um, a project here. Um, and I'm going to create the usual folders here. So I'm going to create my scene folder or my scenes folder and I'm going to create my scripts folder uh, but inside scripts I'm also going to create another subfolder called debug and inside here I'm now going to create my web server script so now I have my web server script and I'm just going to fire up Visual Studio um, so people were having uh, issues with community 2017 using the C++ tutorials um, it, you can build it in, in uh, Visual Studio 2017. It works perfectly well. You just have to install the, the desktop uh, distribute the, the, the C++ SDK. If you only if you've installed the Community Edition from the Unity installer, which is what I did. Uh, I did not install it separately. Normally, I install Visual Studio Community Edition separately from Unity, but this time I was like, ah, I'm in a hurry. Just mash the button. So uh, if you're in that case, it's built just for C Sharp. Um, so if you want to see++, you need to download the, the SDK, which is not a problem. Download, so what you want to do is you want to download my sample code, double click on it, and Visual Studio goes, oh, I can't open this. Uh, do you want me to install this package? And you go, yep, and it installs the package. So it's, it's actually quite easy to do. Uh, I have a link in my Facebook page, which I'll have a link down there if you want to take a look at. Anyway, enough yakking. Uh, so this is uh, the script we have here, and I'm just going to grab Dave's code, um, lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. I'm going to delete a few things as well and change things around. But for the most part, I'm going to leave everything exactly as is uh, because I, I don't need to change anything. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to get rid of this um, 
press namespace. Uh, I don't need it. And then I'm going to get rid of link because I don't need that either. And that's it. I think that's everything that I need to do. And I'm good to go. Okay, so that is the, the, the debug web server. Works exactly uh, as, as Dave intended it to work, um, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't have the namespace on it. That's the only difference. So what I also want to do is I also want to create a, another C sharp script. This time it is going to extend from, from mono behavior and it's going to be called debug web server. So my debug web server is going to use this class that we've, we've just created. So my debug web server is a wrapper around it. And the reason why it's a wrapper around it is because Dave's example uh, down here, which is very, very small text. Uh, so Dave's example here is, uh, it's just a simple C-sharp program that waits for the web server to start. And then um, it, um, it sends out that response, which is, we're going to have almost exactly the same thing as this, but uh, I want to change a couple of things around again because we're going to have something slightly different. For example, I don't know what this is going to be. I'm going to make it local host, but I don't know what port it's going to be, you know, that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is inside here, I'm going to create, I'm going to make the text a little bit bigger, actually tools, options. So this is the uh, really the kind of, I, I've, I've used it on the the, uh, the previous Manic Miner video. Uh, more of them, more of that coming later. Um, but I'm gonna increase this to 14%. Because uh, I, I know quite, um, there's a few of you out there that watch this on TV uh, and, and mobile devices and the, the, the font is quite small. So uh, there's nothing worse than, than looking at something the fonts like this size. So, uh, okay. Um, so Dave's code is this. So we, we still want this bit of the code, but we're going to change a few things around. So we'll put this inside the start because that's a good enough place to put it. And the other thing it needs is it needs this uh, send response part here, which he's got as static, but we don't need it as static. We can just have it as just a normal, um, a normal method. And I am going to do my uh, control period and then add my using system.net. Uh, and I'm also going to add system as well because that doesn't seem to be in there. Uh, and that will give us our date time. And we don't need these two lines. And we don't need that stop there. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to say public int port number equals 8080 public string. And then this is going to be API uh, entry point. I think it's called API entry. What does he call it? He calls it something else. Uh, let's keep it consistent with what he calls it. Uh, he calls it prefix. Okay, so I'm going to call that prefix. Uh, and I'm going to change that to my game. Okay, so the prefix is going to be my game. Um, and we don't need these here. So really, um, this debug web server is going to try and be as uh, open as possible because I want to be able to extend things from it. And we'll show that in just a, just a set, well, later on in the video. So I want to make this as extensible as possible. So I am going to change this to, uh, this is going to be the entry point URL equals string dot format. And then the string is going to be this string, but instead of port, it's going to be zero. And instead of test, it's going to be one. And then I'm going to pass in uh, port number and then prefix. And then I'm going to change that to that. Okay, so now we have uh, taken a little bit more of code uh, away, uh, but we've made it a little bit more extensible because we've said, okay, it's going to be running on local host because it's going to be running on whatever, your game's going to be running on your machine. Does that make sense? 
so it's localhost. We could also use 127.0.0.1, but we'll, we'll use localhost because it's the name. Uh, the port number, uh, again, if you're not familiar with port numbers and things, uh, you can watch my networking tutorials. Plug. Um, but the port number has to be unique for your application. So in this case, our application is a game, so it's not a standard web server. If you know you don't have a web server running your machine, you could use port 80 uh, and then just go to localhost slash and then whatever the, the URL is. But we don't have that, that luxury of knowing that. So we can choose up here what port number we've got. So we can make that any port number we want. And then we specify that inside our web browser and I'll show you that in just a sec. And then our prefix is just whatever prefix we want to we want to give uh, our um, our entry point. Okay. Now here's where the magic happens. Inside the web server, the web server takes this method as uh, its first parameter. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is a, it actually takes a function, but essentially it's a delegate. And again. If you're not familiar with delegates, it's in a link somewhere up here uh, or down below anyway. Uh, there's a link somewhere in this page to my video on delegates. So if you're not familiar with that, go there. But essentially what it means is when the server gets a client request, in other words, the, the client says, hey, I'm looking for this page, uh, it calls this function. Okay, so this function gets called every time the client connects and sends a, a request that says, I need this page. And this parameter here, this one is going to be used to specify the, the uh, prefix for our website. And our website has to live in, in I guess, uh, it's like a virtual folder, but for us, it's an even virtual virtual folder because it doesn't even exist. Uh, and our, so every time we go into this entry point, it's gonna then give us a web, it's gonna give us this page down here. So we can change this to, this is my game. Sup. Something like that. Um, and then it specifies the date and time there, that's fine. Okay. Um, I think that's it. That's all we need to do for, for this very short video. <laughs> we haven't even started yet, so. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna create an empty uh, game object here. I'm going to call this debug web server. You can call it whatever you want. And then I'm going to add my component, which is my debug web server component. So you can see that we have our port number and we have our prefix. We can actually add our tooltips as well. Uh, tooltip port number the web server is going to run on. And then this is tooltip um, web server prefix, something like that. So when we hover over here after it compiles, we get our nice handy dandy pop ups there. And so <clears throat> when we run this game, um, nothing happens. It's just, just a normal game. But when we go to our web server and we type in localhost, Uh, my game it comes up with this which is the message that we uh, we gave which is perfect that's kind of what we wanted um, but that's not particularly great um, what we want to do is we want to have some kind of like debug information in there and so what we could do is we could then you know cycle through all our objects and then put those things in there and then spit them out and uh, but that's not a very good way of doing it. It's not the the, uh, the sort of object-oriented way of doing things, and it ties you very much into to uh, into using this class as some big monster class. So the next time you want to add more debug information, you got to go into this class, change it, all that kind of stuff. And we have these these principles in in, in object-oriented programming called solid, um, and Part of that is that that your class should do one thing. It's single responsibility. So the responsibility for this class is to deliver web pages. Sorry guys. 
soon as I started talking, I was I was fine up until I, I was talking, and then all of a sudden, <clears throat> uh, this happens. So we don't need the update because that never gets called. So this send response we is is a bit much. We need to um, find out a, a better way to do that. So what I'm going to do is, um, <clears throat> what should we do first? I think what we should do first is we should write a basic HTML um, responder. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do just now. Um, and it's going to be a kind of basic one, but it's it's going to be, you know, good-ish. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create um, a class here, and I want to call it HTTP response behavior. I want to call that HTTP response behavior, and then I want to create another class here, and I want to call this um, file. Actually, it would be file HTTP response behavior. Okay, so we have two new classes here. We have file HTTP response behavior and HTTP response behavior itself. So I'm going to open up this one here. So this HTTP, <clears throat> this class is going to be an abstract class. So we're never going to be able to implement this class. Right? We're never going to be able to create an instance of this class. <clears throat> In fact, this class is going to have <clears throat> a public abstract. Um, and then it's going to be a string, and then it's going to be um, name get, and I'm going to have public abstract string um, get response HTTP. What is it? It is HTTP listener request. And that's it. That's the only thing we need in our class here. So I had a couple of comments here. Uh, base class for uh, HTTP responses. The name of the responder. Responder action. So that is the request. And again, we do our control period and add system.net. That's it. That's the only thing we have in here. Now, every other class we want to, to uh, have a response for, we are now going to derive from this and not mono behavior directly. So our classes will derive from mono behavior, but indirectly through this. Okay, so they will have everything there. They'll have get component, all that kind of good stuff. They'll have access to the transform everything but we want it to go through here because we want these classes to have some kind of single responsibility okay so our um, our other class our file response behavior is now going to extend from our HTTP response behavior and you'll see that we have our red squiggly line because it says that we don't have the following items implemented. So we're going to implement them just now. We're going to type in override and then space and then we'll have name. So we're going to have name and then we're going to have public override and then it's going to be get response. And then we that gives us our methods there. So for name, uh, I'm just going to do get return file uh, so this is going to be the name of the entry point 
Um, so for this particular one, it doesn't really matter because we're just going to fake it. Um, but uh, we'll call it uh, provider. We'll just call it file provider. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Now the request, um, we are going to create a folder inside our projects, and then we're going to put web pages inside there. So this is only going to work in debug mode. So we're not going to be able to run this when we deploy a game. Um, we might be able to do it if we put this inside streaming assets. But I'll leave that for you guys to figure this out. So we'll get this working first of all, and then we'll, we'll figure something out. So uh, first things first, what we want to do is we want to just put in a default message in here. So the default message I'm going to put in is I'm just going to return this back that we have here. So I'm just going to return this this back just now. So nothing else has changed. So we'll, we'll say, um, welcome to file provider. Actually, we'll call this um, htdocs. And there's a very specific reason because I'm going to create a folder called htdocs, but I'm, I'm going to use htdocs here just now. Okay. Um, and then inside here, what we're going to do is we're now going to say, okay, uh, if you want to extend this web server, what we're going to do is we're going to add mono behaviors on top of the same object, and then we're going to grab all those components that match that particular type. We're going to add it to a dictionary, and then we're going to check to see what the request is. Okay, so that's uh, that's my plan. So first thing is I'm going to take this one here, and I am going to remove it. I'm going to do a control. X and I'm going to do control V. Oh, really? You know, it'd be nice if it knew that I was actually recording something and then it wouldn't just. This, that's like three videos in a row now? Maybe two. Anyway. Uh, so I'm going to put that there and uh, I have my reasons uh, that will hopefully become apparent soon. And then I want to have a, a dictionary, <clears throat> which is going to be string, and then it's going to be HTTP response behavior, because I want to have a dictionary of these responses. Um, and these are our responses, responders, and it's just going to be a new dictionary. <clears throat> okay. And now inside my awake, I'm going to get rid of that there, so I'm going to do void, that was almost Yoda, void, awake, oh, a bit overzealous there, Visual Studio 2017, just void, um, void awake, and then I'm going to say, go grab me, HTTP response behavior, e equals get components HTTP response behavior. And what this is going to do is this is going to grab all the components that extend from this base class. So because we have one that's that's the file behavior, um, it's going to extend from, from uh, this base class. It's going to pick it up. It's going to put it in here. And then we can use that down here. Okay. So for each uh, behavior and behaviors, and then we're going to say responders, and then we're going to take the name of that behaviors, behavior dot name, name equals behavior. So we're going to add that to our dictionary. So our dictionary is going to have a name. So our URL is going to look something like my game slash ht docs and then that's going to go in there get that behavior and then um, we'll serve up that information okay so i'm going to say 
um, a string uh, entry point equals request dot URL dot absolute path I think it's absolute path and then it's going to be substring um, and then it's going to be entry point URL URL dot length so what the heck is this bit going to do? So if our URL is HTTP da 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 uh, localhost uh, 8080 my game and then we do HT docs, what this is going to do is it's going to cut off all of this. So all of this goes away and we're just left with HT docs. So we're just left with this at the end. That's what this line here does. And then we're going to check to see what that is, and if that um, uh, contains a valid uh, name here, then we're going to pass the request on to the the, uh, um, the behavior that we've created up here. Okay, so I'm going to say HTTP behavior um, responder equals null. And then I'm going to say if responders dot try get value, and then I'm going to specify the key, which is our entry point, and then our out is responder. And I'm going to say return responders. Oh, responder dot response request. And we'll leave it that for just now. So, um, so when we come in here and we do HT docs, this is then going to go into here, and it's going to uh, obliterate everything except for the last part here, and that part is going to go inside entry point. We're then going to look up that our dictionary, so our dictionary up here, which contains a list of entry points, which has names matched against our responders. And then if we find a responder, we're going to then use that responder to generate the response and then send that back to the, the, the web client, Chrome. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to say, um, let's change that to uh, invalid entry point unknown API call. I'll change that uh, to zero, and change that to one, and we'll change that to entry point, and then that one there. Okay, so now our entry point is going to be displayed inside there. So now we have a kind of dynamic um, website. So I'll run this here. So everything's running and <clears throat> what I need to do though is I need to also add my file behavior so it this is what's going to get picked up by the default the debug web server when it starts up so that's it it's all started up so when we go inside here and we do HT docs we hit return we get nothing <laughs> and if we do blank we get nothing as well, so we've broken it. Something's broken. Um, <clears throat> okay, well that worked well. Uh, so I guess we have to debug now. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, HT docs. So inside we come in here, we get that there, subpath. Oh, absolute path my game HT docs. Okay, well that that'll be why then. So what's the fool? Uh, okay, absolute path. So I want absolute URI then. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay. That's an easy mistake to make. Okay. One simple change. And okay. So now HD Docs. Welcome to File Provider. Okay. And we choose something else. We choose that. Unknown call API. Uh, this shouldn't work. There you go. Okay. So we've got we have a semi-dynamic um, website. And we can keep hitting refresh and we actually get the time as well. So you can tell what time I recorded this at. Um, okay, so we have we have the beginnings of a web server. So I mentioned that we wanted HT docs in there. So what I want to do is I want to say else if and then this is going to be entry point dot ends with uh, dot html or entry point dot ends with dot htm. I'm going to use my file responder um, because I know that that behavior exists because I've I've created it. Um, so I'm going to say um what I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna say um bit of a hack. Uh actually let's change this to hack need to create a way to do a, a automatic file responder. So we'll figure we have to do an automatic file responder, but for now we're just going to hard code it. So we're going to do responders, and then this is going to be ht docs dot get response. Now I'm going to specify the request. Okay. So just to check, I want to make sure that the this one here I uh, just want to check the path. Okay. So this is going to be URL. So the URI is path and query. I don't want path and query, I just want path. Okay, so that's my game, absolute path. So it's going to be slash my game slash, okay. Okay. Right. Um, right, here comes the fun bit. Um, my HTML and JavaScript is really rusty, so I'm going to... Um, use quite a lot of uh, cheating here. So uh, I'm going to show an explorer wherever we are there. So Unity debugger. And then this gets me to here. And then um, I think um, where do I want to go? I want to go to uh, temporary cache path, data path. Okay, I think data path takes me to in here. So I'm going to create a folder called htdocs. And then inside here, I'm going to create a new file called index.html. Yep. And I am going to open it with Sublime Edit. And it's a blank file. And I'm going to go over here and get rid of that there. Um, and, um, okay, so I want to create a HTML. And this is going to be doc type. 
uh, HTML, uh, head, title, um, my super awesome game. So the, I, I'm typing this as, um, uh, I'm reading this as I'm typing it, but what I should be doing is I should be talking about why I'm doing it. Uh, okay, so I'm, um, this is me going to create um, just a, 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 gate, uh, uh, a file in here, and we're going to build upon this file. Because what I want to do is, I want to have a little character running around, and I want to be able to send that information to the website and then play that on the screen in the web browser which would be kind of cool. So H1, uh, super awesome game. So anyway, you get the gist. <clears throat> that is a, 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 a web page. OK, so now if we go back to our file here, uh, our file responder. So instead of this, we don't want that anymore. Uh, we want the full path. So path equals application dot data path, but it is path dot combine, and then we want to combine that with ht docs because that's where our folder is, and control period again using system. So this is where our our docs are. So you can see that we've got HT docs here, and we've got index.html there. And I want to find the path there. Now we're gonna fit. We're gonna make it so that you only have one page we can go to, or one. We're not gonna go to subfolders. This is gonna be a particular page. Actually, well, we could. No, I think we can do multiple folders actually. We'll do multiple folders. It'll be easier. Um, so that'll be int pause equals. Then we want to find out where the the first slash is, and then go one beyond that. So we want to say, or sorry, the second slash because it's going to be uh, slash game slash blah blah blah. And this is the end thing that we're interested in. So um, I'm going to do um, pause equals request dot absolute. Um, URL dot absolute path dot uh, index of, and then I'm going to choose the starting point, which is going to be one, because that's one beyond there, and then I'm going to choose oh, it's char and one. If pause is uh, we'll just leave the <clears throat> checking out just now. So see, that's got to be plus one. So my full path is going to be path equals path dot combine uh, the existing path with, and then this is going to be request dot URL dot absolute path dot substring position. Okay. So, what does all this mean? <laughs> okay, so um, absolute path is going to contain something like slash my my game index.html. Okay, so that's what the absolute that's what this variable here is going to find. Now I want to get to this. Okay, so this could be slash something slash something slash something slash index.html but I'm only interested in something that's beyond this second slash. So that's what this part here does is. It says, okay, go get the index of this character starting at this point here. So this is the zeroth character. This is the first character. So the search only starts from this point and moves forward. So it finds this one here and then we add one to it and then that gets us to index here, which we then combine with our full path inside our game to um, 
inside our, our folder structure to the actual path there. So hopefully this will work. Okay, so then we say uh, if file.exists uh, path, and then we just read in the, the data. So string all text equals file.read all text. Return all text. In fact, we could just do return all text. There you go, saves as a variable. Uh, otherwise, return h3 file not found. Actually, we can return 404 file not found because it is a 404. Um, and that is our file response. Now, again, this file response only does one thing. It's a single responsibility. It only goes away, gets a file, sends it back. That's it. So now we should be able to um, go back to here. We will compile. It's compiling. And then we run it. And again, nothing happens. And then we go to here, and we can do our entry point. So we, we know that's invalid. But then we can do index.html. <laughs> we get nothing. Why are you not working? So that's good. Index doesn't work, but index.html not working. Let, uh, let's put a breakpoint here. Well, it's going in here. That's good. So our path. Uh, oh, of course. Okay. All right, our first roadblock. So this is good because we're going to have many, many more of these in this one. Okay, so um, it's time to delve into a little bit of what's inside this web class. Now, you notice that uh, the first thing is you will see is that there is a thread. So it uses multiple threads which means that we don't have access to any of the objects because the, the main thread is where you should do all your Unix, uh, uni, Unix, Unity processing. So because uh, we don't have access to that, we need to cache a few things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say data path, and then I'm going to say um, uh, down here, actually, I'll put it down here. Um, wide awake uh, data path equals application dot data path. Okay, so that that's fine because this awake happens on the main thread, and then inside our get response, I just change that to data path, and that's it. It doesn't it doesn't use it anymore. We don't use any of the objects. Everything is Hunky dory, fine, good to go. Good album, by the way, Hunky dory. If you're uh, if you like David Bowie. Um, and now, if we go to index.html, we get 404, file not found. Well, that's kind of good. Um, it kind of, you know, I don't know why it's formatted like that, but it's working ish. So let's go to here. And we'll add that to there. And then we'll go back to here, hit refresh, takes us to here, and um, position eight. So our path is uh, htdocs index. Oh, it's in assets. That's right, isn't it? Oh, it's in, in assets. Oh, right. We well, just need to move that folder then. And obviously, I need to um, cancel. I need to close that first of all. And move that to assets. Uh, what? Oh, because this is still open. Cancel. Okay, give me a little second here. Uh, 
Okay, I guess we have to close this down. Um, I will save this as scenes um, debug web server. Uh, save as that. <clears throat> What is holding on to you? I don't see what else can be holding on to you. Um, there you go. Must have been just because it was open. Uh, okay, so htdocs is now inside the assets folder. So let's boot up a uh, Unity again. And Okay, everything's there. All right. Every confidence this is going to work. Super awesome game. Okay, so now we have uh, a web server running in Unity, uh, which is you know cool in itself, uh, but we need to kind of um, you know make it a little bit more interesting. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, some things here. So I'm going to create a plane, first of all. And I'm going to scale it by that. And then I am going to add import package. I'm going to add some characters. So this is just from... Uh, this is just from the, the standard assets. Um, which. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about the license agreement. I'll need to check this up. But I, I don't think I can add this to my repository. So you probably have to get this yourselves. Uh, but I will add the, the, the source code that we've. We. Um, we've been working on uh, today. Um, and I also want to add um, cameras. Um, actually, you know what? I don't need a camera. I just need a main camera. Uh, and my main camera is going to go here-ish. Where is my main camera? There we go. Um, I don't need my main camera to do fancy, crazy, cookie things. I just needed to <clears throat> show the little dude running around. Okay, and then I have inside my standard assets. Uh, I have a third person character and I have Ethan, I think his name is, yeah there he is, zero, zero, zero. and my plane is at zero, zero, zero as well. Okay, so Ethan is tiny teeny. Um, I want to move Ethan. Sorry. Come on. There we go. Okay, I'm going to move Ethan over to, to here-ish. So enough that we can sort of see him. Um, and then when we run the game, uh, you can see Ethan's down here, uh, and he's tiny, and I can run him around. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's loving life. Uh, he's living at large, or tiny in his case. So there's Ethan. So I'm going to save that there. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to take Ethan <clears throat> and send him his information across to the website. Now you're probably asking yourself, how? And I'm going to show you. So I think 
Um, what I want to do is <clears throat> I want to have uh, some HD docs there. Uh, so I want to have um, an objects HTTP response response behavior. And I'm going to double click that. And it's going to fire up Visual Studio. And we're going to send wait for it to load. Run it in GoJuice. Okay. And <clears throat> I'll stop putting a breakpoint there. And I also want my objects one to extend from that behavior. Now my oh, I need to do that. I override. So I need to do public string name. Uh, public override string name. Yeah, return objects. So this means that when we type in uh, slash my game slash objects, it's going to go to here. Uh, and then I'm going to do public uh, override, and it's going to get response. And for this one, we also need to have, so we have those values there. We also need to do public game object um, objects. So those are the objects that we're interested in. Um, and I also want to have um, uh, a JSON string. Because I'm going to respond, respond everything as a JSON file. Uh, yeah, JSON file. And I also want. Maybe we can get away with this. So I'm just going to leave it as is. But it, it might come in handy because. Uh, in fact, let's put one in. So this is going to be um, object. Lock equals new object. So I just want to create this, this lock object because we're going to be doing multi threaded. Programming now, and sometimes without a lock, it gets a bit scary. So I'm going to have a private uh, JSON script, uh, JSON object, uh, which is going to be get, and then I'm going to do lock, JSON lock, return JSON, and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing for my set. Lock, uh, JSON equals value, and so this this will stop the threads from from accessing the same data uh, at the same time. Uh, it's probably overkill, but uh, we kind of need it because, again, the problem is um, I, you can't iterate through objects on another thread. You've got to do it on the main thread, which means you have to do it inside the update or some other process. So that's what we're going to be doing just now, is we're going to be working on that. So I'm going to collapse this uh, this down here, because we don't need that information. Um, and we're also going to have um, a couple of objects that are going to be our list objects. So I'm going to do public. Uh, actually, I don't need that. I just need class uh, object description. And that's got to be serializable. Uh, and this is going to have public string name, public vector three position, um, and we could add color in here, but won't, let's not bother. And then I want to have class object list, and then that's going to be list object description uh, object equals new. So again, if you haven't seen this, uh, there's links somewhere uh, around here. Um, check out my serialization videos. I may have to dash off and get more uh, juice. Okay. Um, and then inside my update, oh, stop putting private in there, Visual Studio. Uh, inside my update method, 
Why is that blue and not white? Hmm. Okay. Uh, inside my update method, I'm going to go and iterate through all these objects, create these, and then add them to the list, and then serialize them out. So I'm going to say uh, object list equals new list, and then I'm going to say for each uh, vart o in objects, object description equals new object description, and then I'm going to pass in name equals o dot name. Um, pause. The location. What did I call it? Pause. What did I call it? Pause. Equals o dot transform dot position. And we can add rotation in there as well if we want. But position is good enough just now. And we say list dot. Uh, is that not public? Ah. Uh, public. List dot list objects even dot add description and then I'm just going to say JSON equals JSON utility dot to JSON list and that's it that's all I'm going to do and then inside my response I'm just going to grab what that JSON is and return it back so I'm going to say uh, return JSON so this is going to take every single time um, and so it's going to update there. Uh, you might want to put like a restriction on there that says only update every you know quarter of a second or whatever. But for now, we'll just do it every tick. Um, and it goes through all the objects, uh, creates a nice little um, couple of uh, goes through all the game objects, creates a, a, a list of those game object descriptors and then creates the JSON string from it, and then our get response sends the JSON string back out. Let me get rid of collections up there as well. And that's it for objects. Okay, so now, again, what we can do is we can click on there, and then we can add our objects response behavior. And you see that it takes a, a list of objects or an array of objects I should say so I'm gonna choose Ethan body and I'm gonna put it in here and I'm gonna run it and the game's gonna run and everything's fine everything's hunky-dory but if I make this a little bit smaller put that over there then I go over here and instead of saying my awesome game, I'm going to say objects. I now get Ethan's position in space. So right now he's at minus 34. So if I head him over to here, that's positive in the x direction, he should be probably positive 40 ish. There you go, he's zero, whatever it is. But he's he's further that way than he was. Okay. And so now we have the makings of uh, some data that we can get from from our. Um, it's only taken. I mean, how long is this going? This video going on for? Uh, too long. Uh, this video is it just ticked over an hour. There you go. It ticked over an hour because you were you were, you were being horrible to me. And I have a cold. Um, sorry. Um, so yeah, it's just, just over an hour and we have some debug information. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take that debug information and we're going to create um, some um, JSON um, readers on the JavaScript side. So that's going to be some interesting thing. So that, let's do that now. Um, OK. So I don't know how to do JSON stuff. So I'm going to uh, cheat and I'm going to go to the, the w3schools.com uh, schools and then I'm going to say um, read 
Uh, Ajax. Get request. I think it's this one. Um, I don't want angular. It's in here somewhere. Request. I don't want uh, an Ajax request. That's the one. this one I think it's this one this looks familiar Ajax intro oh yeah this is the one um, yeah this is the one okay so <clears throat> What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to assets, I'm going to go to HD docs, and I'm going to go to here, and then I'm going to open with um, Sublime Edit 2. You can see if we're looking at it. And I'm going to take that, and then I'm going to change this to uh, objects.html. Now, there's a reason why I'm doing objects.html um, because uh, object positions because I'm going to use this web page uh, to get information um, automatically from the game uh, all right so what have they got they have this example here so we're going to you know, rip off this example and then we have this down here which is a script which I'm assuming is just a normal script. Okay. So they don't have this down here. They have ajaxinfo.txt. But our URL, if you remember rightly, is this one. So we're going to use this URL here. So we're going to use this. Okay. So it's pointing to the exact same website um, as we're getting this from. But we're going to go in through a different different door, so it's going to be the same information but through a different door. If that makes sense. So when I run this uh, game here, uh, and I move him down to where's Ethan's body just now? Uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, it should report that he's at minus 17, minus 2.9, minus 22. Okay. So if I go to, uh, instead of objects, I choose objects.html, uh, that'll get to this point here. So when I click on change content, uh, it now gives me the information that I would have got from there. And you can see that it's minus 17.3, minus 2 point, whatever it is, minus 22, whatever. So that gives us the information um, for, for Ethan there, okay? Now, what I want to do though is I don't want it to be um, uh, JavaScript set interval. Uh, what I want to do though is um, I want it to uh, fire that event when I load that page. Okay. So what I'm going to do is instead of on click, I am going to uh, that's demo there. I'm going to say on load equals setup timer. Um, and I'm going to change that to wait for it, like that. And then my function here is going to be setup timer. You never thought you were writing JavaScript today, huh? Um, okay, so setup timer, and then I'm going to say um set timeout and then it's going to be load doc um and then we're going to try this every half a second 
I think. I think every half a second should be good. Um, and then this will then change the 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 values in here. So um, I'm going to stop the game there. Do that there, and then go to here. And then when I press this, so now we see uh, Ethan's. I'll just keep the x value there because it's probably the easiest way I can I can show it. So now we're going to move Ethan along in the x value, and we should be able to see it change on the the uh, the website. Yeah. Why are you not working? Why are you not working? That's okay. That was a timer. Set interval. Oh. Oh. Set interval. Uh, okay, so we do that, and then we run this, wait for it, so now we start to see our values changing uh, inside our, our debug window, which is, you know, it's okay, um, it's not particularly great, so I think what we need to do is we need to be able to map this uh, information on uh on an uh um what do you call them? images so rather than having uh just this uh we should be able to see um see the, the map getting drawn in real time okay so we'll close that down close the blog down and now um okay so how do i do javascript uh so have a script and it is going to be canvas so javascript canvas uh, w3schools by the way what a great website um, okay so I want a canvas here so I want it to be um, so the demo is going to change there that's fine so I, I just, I'm going to keep the demo as is I'm going to change the width of that to 50 because I know that my uh, my uh, world is 50 by 50 because it is um, my my world is 50 by 50 because I have a 5 by 5 um, plane and I multiplied it by I scaled it by 10 so that's why it's 50 by 50 uh, alright so now um, set up timer and then this is going to be actually this is going to be instead of set up timer uh, I'm going to say set up page. Uh, so I'm going to change that to set up page. And then um, what I want it to do is I want it to, uh, I want to get the context. Okay, so this one here. Um, so my canvas, get the context. And then the context itself. I want to do a couple of things in here as well. So, do they have a link to context? Um, uh, full list of canvas tutorial. So you can draw. So we can draw text there. Okay, so we can do font text. Okay, let's try this. So inside our, our document, uh, we have our response here. So this is going to display our response, but let's say we don't want to display the response. Um, what we want to do is we want to do, do um, our object uh, equals json.parse, I think it is. Um, I think it's json.parse. Let me just check. json.parse. 
Uh, it's capital J S O N. Jason Parks. Okay, and from here we then get a list of objects. So I'm going to say for for I uh, actually that should be OBJs uh, equals zero I less than OBJs dot and then it's going to be objects dot length i plus plus and then it's going to be var obj equals obj's dot objects uh, i so where am, where am i getting this information from i'll tell you where i'm getting this information from uh i didn't just pluck it out the uh the atmosphere there uh i'm getting it from here it's my my json object it's that's all it is it's just my json object do i still have it up here i don't think i have i think i closed it down ah um it's my objects here. So now I have access to my name and position. This is the great thing about JSON is the fact that you can write it in, in Unity and then pull it out and you can use it elsewhere. Um, so here's my, my objects here. Um, and uh, for each of these objects, I'm going to draw um, the the uh, the name on the screen at that position. So I'm going to draw. So font is going to be that, but the text is going to be obj dot name, and then the x coordinate is just going to be the x coordinate. So it's going to be obj dot pause dot x, and then the y coordinate is going to be the z coordinate because y is height in in Unity. Dot y. And then we should have the word Ethan body floating around our context. Fingers crossed. What do you think? Think it'll work? That's gotta work. Okay, let's go to localhost mygameobjects.html. now could it be the fact that um, I wonder I wonder I wonder I wonder if Jason um, parse is not a function oh, there you go then because it's Jason, it's lowercase parse. Uh, there you go. There you go. Okay, uh, let's run that again. All right, and what we can do is we can just refresh this page. And we're still not getting any. Oh, I know why. So the problem is, so if I make him zero, zero, um, hmm. okay, let me just uh, think about this for a sec. Um, Let's do let's do some debug. So we want to do inner HTML equals obj dot name. We just want to make sure we're getting the name. Um, so let's just do this dot response text. Let's just output everything so we know that we're getting something. Um, Okay, so we're getting information coming back. Now, I think it's because I need to um, put the canvas uh, coordinates. I want to set the upper left 0, 0, 0. Coordinates example is that. Draw a circle. Canvas reference. Uh, I, want to, I want to set the, 
the origin to be in the middle. Uh, begin path, move to, line to, clip to, transformation, skill translate. Translate, okay. Set new zero zero position to seventy seventy. Okay, so I want to do that. I want to do translate. I think. So I want to translate it to um, and it's going to be 25, 25 because I want it to be in the middle um, and that's going to be the, the start of our, our origin. So, okay, let me go back to here. There we go, we get Ethan. So it's a bit big. And we should also clear the rectangle as well. So I am going to change that from 30 to something reasonable, if I can get back to here. So instead of 30 pixels aerial, I'm going to change that to eight, because that's good enough. And then I want to change that from... I want to do ctx dot clear rect. I think it's clear rect. Oh, I so still can't remember these things. Fill rect. Uh, nope. Where are we? Rectangles. Clear rect. There you go. Clear rect. And then it's going to be fill style. Fill rect. Clear rect. Um, Okay, so I'll clear rect, zero, zero, 50, 50. Okay, so I want to clear the rectangle and then draw it again. Okay. And now, there's Ethan. Oh, we're going to see a shadowy figure on. That's pretty cool as well. That's weird. It's like he's getting stuck. It's not exactly where I thought he was going to go. Why is that so... What is the scale? Uh, where is my... Here we go. Canvas reference. Okay, so let's find out what the scale is. So we get transforms... Uh, scale. Scales the current drawing bigger or smaller? Uh, draw a rectangle, scale to 200% and draw again. Okay, so if we make... Um, well, let's find out why it's not doing that. Surely if Ethan's at minus 40... He should be down here, ish. And when you move him further up the screen, yeah, it's like he's not moving. Oh, that's why. Oh. Pause dot Z. Okay. I wonder why it wasn't moving. Okay, so now, so I'll wait for it. Okay, well, he's not there anymore. Oh, here we go. Um, all right, so I think the fill rect we need to. 
Um, need to sort out first of all. So let's sort that one. So we need to do fill rect, draws a fill rectangle, um, fill rect. I think we need to do set color first, only fill. Um, where are we? Where are we? Um, I still saw this earlier on, where is it? That's the gradient stuff. Um, begin path, nope. Sorry, this is not exactly the most interesting thing in the world. I do apologize. Uh, fill style, fill rect. Okay, fill style equals gradient. So I think you can just do fill style. And then um, you can no, that's not it. Um, JavaScript canvas. Okay. Can you do this? Uh, fill style. Okay, so fill style equals that. All right, okay. Perfect. All right, let's fix this first of all. Okay, so we want to do fill style equals um, uh, f, 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 f. And then that's going to be 50, 50, 0, 0. And then I think I want to set the translate every time. Let's try that. Because um, maybe it's just resetting every time you do that. And hopefully that will uh, fix our problems. So we've added the fill style to white, we fill the rectangle, then we translate, and then we go through all the objects and we draw the, the name of the character uh, at that position. And we'll, we'll tidy it up in just a sec because uh, it's a little bit uh, messy just now. So he's still not in frame uh, until you go up to about here-ish. Come on, Ethan. No, nope. still not in frame. Do you know why? Um, because I think I need to reset the fill style to something else. So I need to do set fill style to be zero 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 zero. Um, and the reason why is because I think it's actually working, but it's drawing white text on a white background, which is a bit like trying to see a white cat in a snowstorm. So, all right, here we go. Ethan, Ethan's body. Uh, so I think the translation thing that only works once. Um, that looked like it was translating it all wrong. Set translate 2525. Um, maybe it just needs to get reset every time you do it. Actually, yeah, maybe it does because I've got a funny feeling if I do that, it's only going to fill in the first rectangle. JavaScript. Yeah. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to um, set this to be zero, 00. For all you JavaScript aficionados out there screaming at me, I'm sorry. I, it's not something I use every single day, um, but you, you kind of get the gist. It's, you know, <sighs> and a juice as well. A cold beer after this one. Okay, um, so we get Ethan here, and then over here we do there. Okay, so we're still getting that. Um, you have to reset the transform then. Translate. Translate. Is 
Is it a reset translate? JavaScript reset translate. Uh, how to reset default? Here we go. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. CTX, save, translate, restore. Okay. So that's going to be ctx.save. And then I want to restore it. CTX, restore. Is it restore? restore so save you do your translation you restore it okay because that that's perfect because we want to zero everything in so that when we uh, reset this um, it does the right thing all right okay so now reset Still not quite right. It's still filling this in here. Because look at this up here. <laughs> this is why I don't use JavaScript. Because um, I'm not familiar with JavaScript, which means I don't use it. Because every time I use it, I get frustrated because I don't use it as much. All right, here we go. So this should now start posting in things. Please work. Please clap. Oh, here we go. Okay. So it's still not working quite the way I was hoping. Um, so I think the first thing is it's backwards. So I think it's because this should be negative because um, Y is positive down the way for canvas and Z is positive in the way for, um, for uh, Unity. So I think that should do it. Um, but we'll never know. Oh, here we go. So it's moving in the right direction now. Uh, it's just not quite, I haven't quite got the scale right yet for it. Hmm. Okay, there's a lot of faffing around here. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go for a cup of a uh, cup of tea um, and refresh my brain, uh, and then come back with uh, with hopefully a, a better solution. Um, but for you, this is going to be uh, nanoseconds. Okay, it turns out I didn't know where zero zero was. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to make this uh, this canvas a little bit bigger, um, just to give us a sort of a bit more room. Uh, make it a bit bigger than that, and I'll change that from FF whatever it is to FF FF, so that gives us white canvas. And then um, I'm not entirely sure I want to have. Um, Uh, Ethan's name. I think what I want to do is I want to just have uh, his and I can go out here as well. <clears throat> I don't want to do that in a for loop. Uh, I think I want to just put, point his his uh, um, his position. I think that's what I want to do. I just want to draw his position. Um, okay, 
So what I'm going to do is, I think I can do fill rect as well. I'm just going to do that. So uh, ctx.fill style uh, equals, and then I'm going to choose red for that. And then I'm going to say uh, ctx.fill rect, and then I'm going to choose, and then it's going to be obj position dot x obj obj dot position dot z and what I did was I moved Ethan to the center position uh, in the world so now um, I will put him here and oh got a window open here and then I'll turn and I don't even see that but I don't know if you can see that because it doesn't exist. Fail to execute uh, fill rect. Why is it failing to execute? Because I have not put in the dimensions. So I'll make that four by four. And, and then I just need to refresh the page. It's great because I'm working in HTML now. I don't need to recompile. I can do my debug things. Um, and I can actually write debug code that puts things um, right in the position there, so that's zero zero zero, and he's at two. That's kind of weird, but whatever. Uh, so now we can see Ethan is moving around. Oh yeah, because it's upside down again. Oh, uh, oh, I didn't need to stop that. Ah, not listening to myself. Um, I don't need to change that information. I can I can just write this in my JavaScript code, and I can write any debug information I want, and I can even change things on the fly, um, and then get the, the get those options to change. So now you can see that when we move down the screen, uh, we move down in the world, uh, Ethan moves down in the world. Um, oh yeah, I need to change the, the rectangle. But now you can see you can actually create a path and find out where your users are going um, based on where you think they are in the world and you know what positions they want to be at. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where I wanted to, to uh, get to from here. So I want to change that. To, oh yeah, because it's translated to zero. To, okay, so okay. Here's the problem. I changed that to there, and what I should have done was I should have. Um, my canvas is that, so I think I can get my width from here. So I can do that as width, and I can do that as height, and I can do that as c dot height divided by two, and I can do this as c dot width divided by two, and then that should mean that if we change the canvas size, everything else should just work. Okay. Uh, and again, I didn't have to stop that. I keep doing that because I'm used to, do, uh, to doing it that way. But now we have Ethan in the, the sort of center there. So when we move to the, the, the right, you can see that he's moving over there to the right. And he's moving up a little bit. And you get him to move up further up the screen. And so you can track this. And the nice thing now is that because you have this information, you can now post this to, to uh, a database. Uh, if you want, you've got it in any format that you want, and you can write additional debug information uh, just inside here. So it'd be interesting to, to see what you guys, um, you know, make of this video. Um, you know, what what improvements you can think of. Um, one of the things uh, that would be nice is if we have uh, objects in here that those objects then get. Um, then get translated across into to here so we can actually see where you know Ethan gets blocked and that, and that kind of thing or maybe even draw the the map I mean right now this is effectively a top-down view of this terrain here but what if you um, what if you uh, signaled where Ethan died or whatever it is um, in fact there's a great um, there's a great video of, of where all people die in just cause uh, if you Google just cause death positions, um, you'll see a, a video, I think. Um, I'll, I'll link to it below. I did so many links today. <laughs> I never remember them all. Um, and 
uh, so that you'll be able to see the positions here. But this kind of gives you an idea of, of what you can you can do. Uh, you can get Unity to, to basically create a website, uh, web server, and then you can use that information and you can extract that information from there and then do things based upon that uh, inside here. So for example, um, what I can do is I can say, uh, if, so this is me writing, this is, again, this is me, I'm running, for me, uh, I'm running uh, a web server on here, the, the game's running, and then I'm going to write debug code on the fly. So I'm going to say, if object position dot x is less than zero, uh, I'm going to set the fill style to purple, for whatever reason ctx.fillstyle equals ff00ff. Okay, so if it's less than zero, I'm going to set it to purple. So um, I've got that there, and then I refresh that. And you see it's purple now. But as soon as I start moving over to here, he will eventually change to red. So you can see you're not actually right <clears throat> on the fly debug uh, code just you know to do whatever you need to do. Um, it's your game, it's your uh, debug thing. So anyway, that's uh, I think uh, I think that's as far as I want to take this video today. Uh, if you're interested in doing any follow-ups from this, you know what if what if you want to do I don't know whatever it is you want to do, then uh, pop a comment down below. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I, I do appreciate your uh, your patronage uh, coming around and, and using your eyes uh, to watch me faff around with uh, programming. It's it's uh, it's very much appreciated. Um, if you uh, liked, then thumbs up. If you didn't like, thumbs down. Let me know why. Uh, either way, I'm gonna move that out of the road before I knock it over. Um, if you have got this far and you haven't subscribed, please uh, subscribe and hit that bell button. Uh, apparently, it's a Pavlovic response uh, that, that YouTube wants you to do, is if you, you've subscribed, it's not enough. You need to hit that bell button there. So uh, the other sort of uh, call to action uh, is tell your friends. If you like these videos, uh, tell your friends and, and uh, let them know. Um, and then, you know, just let them know. You know phone them up. Go, hey mom, uh, just phoning. Uh, there's this, uh, this guy on YouTube, you should watch him. It's called Jimmy DeResta. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks again, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye. Little bonus entry point here, um, which is kind of uh, ironic because it's an entry point. Uh, um, I said I would come back and, and fix this uh, this automatic file responder. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to do uh, a class, and I'm going. No, I'm not. I'm going to do it this way. Uh, I'm going to do create, and then I'm going to create a class here, and my class is going to be called file responder attribute. File responder attribute, a reload solution. Okay, and this is going to extend from attribute. And you've probably seen attributes before, especially if you've used, uh, if you've watched my serialization tutorials, and we've sort of seen things before there. Um, using system. Now, this file responder attribute is going to have nothing on it. It's going to have absolutely nothing on it. I just want to extend it from attribute uh, because I want to add it to here. I want to say file responder attribute. That's all I want. I just want to put that there. And the reason why I want to put that there is because inside uh, my debug web server, uh, instead of having this hack in here, I'm going to get the value from out of here. So I'm going to say um, this is going to be my file responder. So my file responder is going to contain null because it doesn't have anything in there. And 
I'm going to say um, uh, if behavior dot get type dot get custom attributes. This is where we start to go into a little kind of craziness. Uh, and I'm going to do type of, and then it's going to be file responder attribute. And then I think we specify false here. Um, attributes, and then that's going to be um, oh yeah, it's got to be uh, object uh, result. So that's a bit long. So I will extend that a little bit uh, over here. So I'm going to say, go grab those those results. If that has this attribute, then I'm going to say, if result equal to null and result dot length is equal to one, uh, file responder equals behavior. Okay. I'll tidy up. So if this attribute, if this attribute has been placed on this type, which is what we've done here, so you see we now have this file responder attribute here, uh, then we're going to add it to our list. So now instead of doing this hacky thing, I'm now going to say uh, if file responder do, uh, not equal to null return file responder dot get response request. So it's almost exactly the same way as we got there, but we don't have to hack in there and know that that ht doc um, responder exists. And if we don't have one set, we don't use it and it, it doesn't get set and we get the invalid entry point unknown API and, and everything just works from there. So now uh, running this uh, application, we should still get our, uh, where are we? So I grab this one over here, I do local host objects, and you see we still get our, uh, our page up that we got from there. And if we take away the .html and we just do objects, we still get our raw data, so we can actually feed that into something else. So anyway, that was that was the extra bonus thing that I, I was I was editing the video and I was like ah I forgot to mention that. So that's that's uh, that's as we've we've uh, completed this this particular cat this particular class uh, and everything should be good. So cool.